This year's cliffhanger federal election saw the Greens become major political players after winning almost 12% of the national vote. With the Greens also holding the balance of power after the Tasmanian election earlier this year, the party must have had high hopes for the Victorian state election to be held this weekend. But those hopes received a big setback when the state Liberal opposition announced it would preference Labor ahead of the Greens. With polls indicating that Brumby Labor government could be on an electoral knife edge, some Liberal supporters fear the decision could prove costly. Kirsten Murray reports. It's just so exciting to be here in a campaign that's so winnable. 2010 was billed as the year of the Greens and here in Victoria, just like the federal election, there's been much ado about the minor party with major ambition. Your vote for Labor has never mattered more. And in my view, the Greens are worse than the Labor Party. Much worse. Last Saturday in November, Melbourne, let's make history again. <laughs> Off the back of their historic win in Canberra, Greens boss Bob Brown couldn't help but hope for a repeat in the state. But how things change, the Victorian Liberals' decision to preference the Greens behind Labor has dealt a mighty blow. The Liberal announcement was a bombshell. It was a total game changer. The Greens did not expect it. They were winded. For months, the Liberals had toyed with preferencing the left-wing group hoping to crush their rivals' chance of retaining inner-city seats, but almost certainly delivering up to four Greens to Victoria's lower house. Then last week, all bets were off. I felt that the Greens were very complacent, even cocky, about the possibility of getting four seats or more on Liberal preferences. The only question they didn't ask is whether they're going to get those preferences in the first place. How much of a setback is it for you? Oh, well, it is a setback, um, but it is this, these seats are still quite winnable for us. Good morning, the Greens. How are you? Brian Walters is running for the seat of Melbourne. Without Liberal preferences, the odds of him ousting the sitting Labor member have lengthened. But the barrister says this manoeuvre simply confirms the Greens have become a serious threat. I think the major parties are petrified at the rise of the Greens. They have no answer. Um, they've got no policies that they can put forward positively. So all they have is the um, option of climbing into each other's arms and hoping that uh, they can hold the Greens out. The seats under focus lie within Green star Adam Vance, federal electorate. In August, he became the first in his party to get elected to the lower house in a general election and it was Liberal preferences that helped get him there. The power he's enjoyed since has horrified many Conservatives. It was important for Ted to be seen to stand up for what he believed in, as this is what we believe in and stand for, and we're not going to compromise that to do a deal with the Greens, which may lead to a hung parliament. That's great, but may also mean that the Greens' agenda is the tail that wags the Victorian dog. Is this a smart move? Uh, well, I'm not so sure. Again, it depends. Uh, if it's about uh, trying to cause your opponents as much trouble as you possibly can, force them to fight a fight on two fronts, uh, then perhaps it's not such a smart move. On the other hand, if there's a real danger that your party is going to rip itself apart over the issue of whether or not they should um, uh, preference the Greens, then uh, perhaps it was a smart move. This is quite a gift for you, isn't it? Oh, look, what the Liberal Party decides to do with its preferences is obviously a matter for them. I mean, my focus is really on the 27th of November. <laughs> Richard Wynne must be feeling more confident now, but the Liberal deal has exposed the fragility of Labor's hold on the area. A drive through these electorates highlights how worried the ALP's been about the erosion of its support base. But unlike the federal campaign where Labor tried to appease all, candidates here can be loud and proud about their views on climate change, asylum seekers and same-sex marriage. I think it is appropriate that when people ask, what is your view, what is your position, you ought to put that position, and I'm very comfortable about that, as is my party. For Liberals on the ground, there's a strong feeling of relief now their party's taken a stand, even if the decision makes it that much harder for candidates like Luke Martin to win. I think it's been one of the best decisions we've made in a number of years. I have people coming up to me daily, people emailing me, people ringing me and saying, well done, well done to you and the Liberal Party for making such a bold decision and a good choice for the future of Victoria. It's a gutsy decision. Uh, it, it potentially risked 
losing the election on the twenty seventh of november. It's been a divisive and distracting issue for the party, with former heavyweights Jeff Kennett and Peter Costello questioning the strategy in print, but neither would talk on camera. I think the world has changed since Peter and Jeff were in office. Uh, even in the three years since the 2007 federal election, we have to look at the situation now and in the future. And we're talking about a battle for, of ideas and a battle of political survival. We love trees and uh, we love regeneration. We, it's know, no coincidence the ALP launched its campaign in Bendigo. Regional Victoria was responsible for getting Labor into office in 1999. The Liberals' preference deal has now freed Labor from protecting its heartland. Labor can now uh, not worry about committing resources to the inner city. It can now concentrate its efforts uh, out in the outer suburbs where its marginal seats are and in the regional cities where its key seats are. But 11 years is a long time to be in office and once again it could be regional voters who change the government. This was always going to be a tough election for Mr Brumby uh, um, because Labor is going for its fourth term. They may lose a couple of seats but I don't think that they will lose enough seats to lose government. Even if Ted Bailey fails to take the reins on Saturday, the Victorian Liberals have now set a precedent for how other states might deal with the Greens, a party that, for now, is still in need of a helping hand. I think over time we'll be able to gain seats in our own right. There's uh, a rise in Green vote right across the state. Of course, it's strongest in the inner city at the moment. But uh, country Victoria is... Um, much more nuanced than uh, some of the major parties seem to realise. Just how much of an impact preferences have on Saturday is still really anyone's guess. At the last state election, more than half of voters ignored how to vote cards to pick their own preferences. And that leaves the Greens with their fingers crossed this weekend. Kirsten Murray with that report from Melbourne.